Good afternoon and welcome to Oregon News. I'm Ronald Clark. If the Eugene City Council follows through on proposed new rules on fireworks, he may only get to light these two times a year. With scouts on hand, the newest batch of NFL hopeful ducks takes center stage in the Oregon's Pro Day. When cruisers roll out of Eugene Police Department headquarters on Country Club Road, you might notice that some of the drivers are a little older than the others. These are the members of Seniors on Patrol, a group of elders who could be gardening in their retirement, but instead have found another way to give back to their community. Behind me is one of the four fields at the University of Oregon. These fields are used for several sports, but for students like Aaron Lee, these fields are training grounds. At around 4.30 this morning, members of Multnomah County Sheriff's Special Investigation Unit raided the residence of gang members in Northeast Portland. What they found was grow operations for marijuana along with methamphetamine and five firearms. The rain was coming down hard today at PK Park. After a couple of rain delays, the Ducks finally won the ball game 5-1, sweeping the series over the Arizona Wildcats. The recent attention to sexual assault has brought the issue of student safety to the forefront, and ULPD has a program designed to help students get home safely. Another great Duck that will forever be in our hearts is Alex Ravello, the junior tennis player who passed away last year in a fatal cliff diving accident. Behind the spirits of Ravello, the men's tennis team did something they haven't done in 10 years. Our Preston Highfield has a story for you. In less than a month, about 4,000 students will graduate from the University of Oregon. Many of them will walk away with not only a diploma, but also a wheelbarrow full of debt. Aaron Lee and others will get their opportunity to try out next fall. Reporting for J432, I'm Ronald Clark. With the Beavers coming into town on Tuesday, Chase and the Ducks will get a chance to redeem themselves at home. Reporting for Duck TV Sports, I'm Ronald Clark. That wraps up for this week's episode of Oregon News. Thanks for watching. While on her usual morning run near Prefontaine's Trail, Leslie Thomas, a preschool teacher at the Family Co-op Center, encountered the unexpected. Around 11.30 a.m. February 1st, Leslie passed a man on the bike, calling out on your left in normal fashion. But what happened next, she did not expect. I yelled out to him as I was coming up to him, you know, on your left. And I thought he was being a nice person by stopping, pulling completely to the right. But as I started to pass him, he pulled his bike out in front of me, knocked me down, and when I got up, he grabbed me by the arm and tried to pull me into the bushes. Leslie, significantly smaller in stature, chose to fight back. Hit him a couple of times in the shoulder, and then he was kind of almost facing me, so I turned my head and was spitting in his face and yelling as many profanities as I could to get him to let go of me. Um, I was trying to make a really big scene, and um, he was really, big, towered over me. He was easily six foot tall. Um, he finally let go of me. When he let go, I staggered and started to fall backwards. And as I started to stagger and fall, he tried to grab me again. And um, I just started kicking my feet out at him and I ran. While this crime occurred off campus, a lot of crimes happen in the campus area. One of the most dangerous spots on campus is the Eugene Pioneer Cemetery. I recently spoke with crime prevention specialist Todd Snyder, who offered tips to avoid similar situations. Well, the absolute biggest thing is to avoid isolation. So if you have a choice between walking down a populated street and walking across an empty graveyard, take the populated street. If you have a choice between waiting a few minutes and having a friend walk with you versus walking alone, wait for your friend. And that by itself is going to be huge in terms of making you uh, 100 percent safer. Todd also mentioned two tools that could increase safety for students. One of these tools being Safe Ride, a free shuttle that offers rides to students walking at night. The other is an emergency call box that automatically dispatches Eugene police when activated. As for Leslie, she said she would not let this incident keep her from running. I didn't want to lose something that I love and I felt like if I gave up what I like and went to a different trail that I would be letting him win. So I wasn't going to let that happen. So if you're planning on running alone anytime soon, please take the proper precautions and be safe. Reporting for J432, I'm Ronald Clark. The University of Oregon has 18 D1 varsity sport teams. 
But they aren't the only students on campus staying fit, being active, and competing. All of our physical education classes are just that. They're an opportunity to provide activity for, for students, um, but to provide education around what that looks like and to provide opportunities for students to learn how to be active. The University of Oregon offers 526 physical education courses each year. With the opportunity that these courses provide students, along with club and intramural sports, it's hard to say that D1 athletes are the only student athletes on campus. I wouldn't just call the Division I athletes student athletes. Anybody that comes into the rec center and is active, that's an athlete as far as I'm concerned. Webster's Dictionary defines athlete as a person who is trained in or good at sports, games, or exercises that require physical skill and strength. This definition seems to fit these students perfectly as they are being trained on skills that are required for their specific sport. Whether they're at the highest level or whether they're at intramural sports, they are working for a team. They have coaches and they work out to stay strong. They take probably my PE class because they don't have maybe a personal trainer or a training staff, I should say, helping them. But that to me is the student athlete. To the NCAA, the D1 athletes that represent our school in intercollegiate play are the student athletes. But to others, we all can be student athletes. Everyone that walks through these turnstiles, the 4,000 or 5,000 students a day, you're all a student athlete. You might not realize it, but you're doing something active. Activity is the key to life. Reporting for Duck TV Sports, I'm Ron Paul. My name is Sean O'Connor and I'm 52 years old, and I live in Agnes, Oregon. I grew up in a city, Los Angeles, and uh, there were very limited opportunities to get out and enjoy uh, the outdoors. And so when I moved to Oregon and I saw the hiking trails, um, I had little kids at that point, and I just liked taking them out and exposing them to nature. And uh, the more I hiked, the more I enjoyed it. So I just like getting as far away from uh, city life as I possibly can. Where I live in Agnes there's hiking trails and so um, on my days off I'll just hike up the trail say eight to ten miles on some days um, to get to places close to a river uh, where I can swim or uh, just hang out. We deal with a lot of rain uh, but the plus side of the rain is it's very it's very green a lot of vegetation which I, I really enjoy after living, you know, in Los Angeles where, you know, there's vegetation, but it's not, not like you see up here with the huge, you know, uh, timber that we have here. Just the size of the trees is just stunning. Um, and to be in that forest cover where it's so protected, it's really beautiful. The largest Port Orford cedar um, it's a species of cedar that grows specifically in this area of southwestern Oregon and then some pockets in Northern California. And it um, unfortunately has been uh, exposed to a fungus that spreads through the soil, through the root system, uh, and it's killing off many of the Port Orford cedars. It's spread by human activity. Um, it'll spread on the uh, tires of your cars. So when logging trucks go up into the uh, forest to harvest trees, they spread this fungus, which then spreads to the Port Orford Cedars. So unfortunately, a lot of those trees have succumbed to the forces of humankind. But the trees that remain that are um, old growth and have been here for hundreds and hundreds of years, I, I believe we should keep those intact. Hiking has given me more of an opportunity to see uh, what we stand to lose if we don't manage our uh, forests and our rivers and streams uh, better than we do. Coming up with both Ducks baseball and softball teams take their talent on the road for Pac-12 matchups. And the Acrobatic and Tumbling team is set to defend its title at the Acrobatic and Tumbling National Championship. We'll have details after the break. Welcome back, I'm Ronald Clark with this week's sports update. The number seven ranked Ducks will have their hands full this weekend with the top 10 battle against their in-state rival, number four, Oregon State. The Ducks will be coming into the series riding a nine game winning streak. 
Since the University of Oregon reinstated the baseball program in 2009, the home team has won 15 of the 21 Civil War games. Junior pitcher Jake Reed talked about how hard it is to play in Corvallis. It's the most hostile place I've ever played at in any sport. Uh, it's, it's tough, but it, it's fun. you got to learn to kind of embrace it and you know, just get after it the same as you would here. The three-game series begins against the Beavers tonight at 7 p.m. Junior lefty Tommy Thorpe will be on the mound for the Ducks. Moving on to the number one softball team in the country, tonight the Ducks will begin a three-game series against the Stanford Cardinals. The Ducks have now held the number one spot for three consecutive weeks. A huge part of their success this year has to do with the superb play and leadership of sophomore pitching ace Sheridan Hawkins. Oregon News sports reporter Chris Brooklier has a story on Hawkins stepping into the leadership role. You can watch Hawkins and the number one ranked Ducks kick off their series against the Cardinals tonight on ESPNU at 7 o'clock. Another number one team in Eugene is the Acrobatic and Tumbling team. The Ducks are in Azusa, California for the Acrobatic and Tumbling National Championships. The championship competition kicked off last night with individual events, which saw the Ducks take home six event titles, the most of the night. The quest for their fourth consecutive championship continues with the team matchups tonight. That's all for sports. We now send it to Nick Nathaniels with your weekend forecast. Nick?